Thanks for tuning in to Ag PhD. I'm Brian Hefty. And I'm Darren Hefty. Thanks for joining us today. You know, we've got a lot going on in the fields with harvest and with fertilizer application, but we're going to add one more job to your list, fall herbicide application. Now, there are some weeds that are much easier to control right now in the fall than they will be in the spring. We'll explain today. Well, speaking of jobs you need to do in the fall, another one that really used to be in, done in the spring that's now done in the fall is seed selection. I'm sure that you've had seed dealers coming out and talking to you already but how do you pick the right seed to plant on your farm this coming year? We're going to talk about it today. Well, I don't know if seed selection has anything to do with weed control, Brian. Sometimes it does, depending on the trait. But our Weed of the Week is one of those interesting weeds that you've probably seen before, but maybe didn't know what it was. So that'll be fun to talk about. But first, here's this week's Farm Basics. Farm Basics is brought to you by the Liberty Link Trait and Liberty Herbicide from Bayer. The most reliable weed management solution, Liberty Link and Liberty Herbicide are the link to efficient row crop production and sustainable weed management. During our Farm Basics time today, we're going to talk about drying grain. Well, Brian, when we're thinking about drying grain, primarily on our farm, we're talking about corn. There are many different crops that farmers may harvest where the seed is still a little bit too moist to store long term. So in order to get that grain in proper condition for storage and for selling to different processors, farmers have to take that moisture out by drying that grain down. So for us on our farm, corn harvest means let's get the dryers going because chances are we're gonna have to dry some of that corn down. Yeah, so as we're standing in a field of soybeans, soybeans we can let dry naturally. Same thing with wheat, same thing with a lot of crops out there. But with corn, the corn is getting ready late in the fall, and by the time the corn would actually get dry itself, well, we might have two feet of snow on the ground. So we need to take that corn out. The other thing is, if we let corn naturally dry down to the point that it needs to be, then a lot of times that corn starts shelling off real easily in the combine header. In other words, when we're going out combining, we lose a bunch on the ground, and we don't want that to happen either. So for those reasons, we harvest that corn when it's a little bit on the moist side. A lot of times 18 to 20 percent moisture is where we like to target the moisture for harvesting but we need to dry the grain down to 12 to 14 percent to properly store in a bin so it doesn't spoil. Now what some farmers will do who don't have grain dryers on their own farms or maybe their grain dryer just can't handle that many bushels all in one shot they'll haul grain to a grain elevator in town and that grain elevator will have a large dryer where they can dry grain very quickly as it's coming in from multiple farmers. And this is a way that a farmer could start harvesting. His grain's just a little bit too wet, but he's got some place to go with it. When you've got moist grain, what's going to happen if you put that in a bin is you're gonna have some spoilage if it sits there very long. Now temperature certainly comes into play as well. If it's really cool out, say it's 40 degrees and you're harvesting wet corn, no big deal, but let's just say that you get a nice daytime high of 80 degrees. Now you've got warm temperatures and moist grain. That's a recipe for disaster. So in those situations, farmers need to get that grain dried relatively quickly. Well, the other thing that farmers will do is they'll wait a day or two until the temperature cools down. Then they'll blow cold air into their grain bin to cool the temperature down. It takes a while for that grain to cool way down, but that's one way that farmers will do it. Or they'll even talk about, I'm going to freeze my grain. So if it's down to 10 or 20 degrees outside and they can pump all that really cold air in there, when they drop the temperature down below 32 degrees of the grain, even if it is a little moist, we typically don't have a lot of spoilage or bug problems. It's the same thing like putting food in your freezer. You don't have to worry about it. You can store it much longer than if you put it in your refrigerator or certainly if you just lay it on your counter. Now there are a couple of different ways that farmers can dry grain down. Now they can certainly blow hot air through the grain. Maybe they'll have a dryer that'll have a temperature of 140 degrees and blow that hot air through the grain trying to get that moisture to come out. That's one way to dry grain down. The other way would just be to put it in a bin that has an aeration floor. What I mean by this is that the bottom of the bin, the floor of that bin will have holes in it. So air can be blown from the bottom and they'll have fans coming out the top or the side of the bin where they can get air to circulate through all that grain. So without using heat, 
farmers can just find days where the humidity is not very high and blow air through the grain to try and get that moisture to come out. Well, still, they're using warm air there and it takes a lot more time to dry the grain down with warm air as opposed to with hot air. The other thing I was going to mention is there are typically two types of processes. There's continuous flow and there's batch for grain drying. So with the batch, pretty simple, you put a certain amount of grain into a dryer and you wait, let's call it five hours, 10 hours, whatever, in order to get enough heat, get the temperature of the grain up enough. Then after that, you're gonna cool that grain down, the moisture disappears. With a continuous flow process, that grain will simply move through that drying system, maybe in as little as half an hour's worth of time. It gets enough heat on it, then you put it into another area where it can cool down. And sometimes even in that continuous flow process, there'll be a portion of that dryer that will cool it right there. So the grain coming out of the dryer is cool, but the point is we wanna heat it up, we want to cool it back down and kick some of that moisture out. And of all of this, of course, costs money. When a farmer has to buy natural gas or propane or whatever it takes to heat that air up to blow through the dryer, that's going to cost some money. So what happens is if you haul to a grain elevator, for example, they will discount the price of your grain as you're coming in. So let's just say that you brought in some corn that was 20% moisture and the elevator wanted 15% moisture. Well, that's five points of moisture that they're going to dry out. Many elevators may dock somewhere between five and ten cents per point of moisture. So if you had five points of moisture to dry out times, let's just use a number in the middle, eight cents per bushel, well that may be a 40 cent per bushel discount when you bring in that wet grain. Now it all depends on which elevator you're hauling to, some just dock straight cents per bushel, others take a shrink factor and shrink that grain down because they know when they have 20% moisture, when they dry all that moisture or that water out of the grain, they're gonna have less grain at the end. So they may figure a shrink factor and a certain discount of cents per bushel as well. Well, once again, it's very important that farmers have dry grain if they're going to store it long-term. Another thing that's very important for farmers is controlling weeds like our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? What's next in weed control technology? Roundup Ready to extend soybeans, an advanced soybean product with tolerance to dicamba and glyphosate. Roundup Ready to extend soybeans. Extend your control. Looking to maximize yield? Quick Roots is a microbial seed inoculant that allows the plant root to explore a greater volume of soil, the key to higher yields. Quick Roots continues to generate yield response on corn, soybeans, wheat, and more. Quick Roots is applied to the seeds so the live microorganisms go right to work, enhancing seedling vigor, increasing the uptake of certain nutrients including NPK, and expanding root volume. Maximize yield on your farm this season. Call TJ Technologies or your local dealer and get your Quick Roots today. For years, FarmLogic has been the easiest and most convenient way to keep up with your farming operations. Well, it just got better. Introducing FarmPad for your phone. You always have your phone with you, so entering records as they happen is as easy as a touch of a button. Chemical database, GPS, service records, and more. When you do it on the farm, save it on your phone and it's backed up forever. Call or visit farmlogic.com for a free trial and find out why FarmLogic is the best decision tool for the farm. You expect a lot from this seed. And as it grows through each stage of development, Agroculture Liquid Fertilizers is there, feeding your crop exactly what it needs when it needs it. So no matter how you fertilize, no matter when, AgroLiquid efficiently brings all the nutrients your crop needs for a great harvest. From one kernel in the ground to 600 on the ear. For better yields and better quality, Agroculture Liquid Fertilizers. At Titan Machinery and Case IH, we offer better solutions for all your production needs. It's more than our job, it's who we are. We are parts. We are service. We are training. And most importantly, we are here for you. In any season, for every reason, we've got you covered. Case IH and Titan Machinery, better solutions. Proven herbicide for decades, Dicamba can provide burn-down residual control of tough and resistant weeds for up to 14 days. That's another reason why farmers will use Dicamba for years to come. Brought to you by Roundup Ready Plus Weed Management Solutions. 
few months ago, I was talking to one of the large egg chemical manufacturers and they said, boy, it'd be really nice for these Roundup resistant weeds if we could get more farmers to apply their herbicides in the fall. And I said, it's never gonna happen in the northern part of the country because we got snow flying pretty soon and we've got a lot of things going on in the fall. We've got harvest to do, we've got tillage to do, we've got fertilizer to apply, and all those things are more important than getting the herbicide out. In the springtime, a lot of farmers have time because it doesn't take long to plant in comparison to the amount of time it takes to harvest. So we've got some time to do some spraying then, but to get spraying done in the fall, it's pretty tough. However, if you do want to do some fall application on your farm, we'll give you some tips today. You say, oh, we don't have time to do it. It depends on what you have for weeds. Now, if you're talking about fighting pigweeds, well, that doesn't, that's doesn't a make whole, any, doesn't that's make any a difference whole different... on time with what weeds we have. The uh, point is we're always short on the amount of help we have every fall. What I'm saying is the importance of spraying for a field that has a pigweed problem in the fall is about zero in my estimation. The reason why, it's an annual weed. It's going to die off in the fall, and if any germinate late in the season, I mean, granted, if they go to seed, the damage is already done in your field. So it doesn't really matter if you're putting a herbicide out. Yes, I'm but, about, but the concern, though, and the reason why these companies want to do it is because these Roundup-resistant weeds get started in the spring before a guy gets a chance to get out there and spray. But what I'm concerned about is these winter annual type weeds. When we have things like mare's tail that may get a start in the fall, or we yep. have you know some of these other tough weeds that Roundup's not doing a great job on, if we get them started in the fall, well, they're already pretty big in the spring, and it gets pretty tough. When you think about going into a soybean crop, like this, you can only use an ounce of Sharpen with okay, your Roundup, and that's not enough to get a big mare's tail Yep, plant. but that's a whole different deal. So we've got two things. Are we going to kill weeds that are already up, or are we just going to spray to leave residual for weeds that are going to come early in the spring? So two completely separate things. Let's talk first about killing the weeds that have germinated this fall and are coming up now. So in our operation, for example, when we have things like mare's tail, dandelions, some of these other winter annuals that pop up, we'll go out there with a very high rate of banville, like a quart per acre. You can certainly use 2,4-D as well, but we want to use something that's going to hit these weeds really hard in the fall and preferably leave a little bit of residual come spring. But mainly, we've got to get all these weeds under control now, then we don't have them there next spring. Well, I think that is a big thing. And if you're farming wheat acres and you say, I've got winter wheat and cheatgrass is an issue, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You have to kill those things in the fall because they're much tougher to kill in the spring. Now, the other side of that coin well, is... Well, wait, let's talk about how we're going to do that. With this cheatgrass in the fall, our suggestion is Maverick has the longest residual, but the problem with it is it has the longest residual. So rotation may be an issue. So a lot of guys, instead of Maverick, will go out with Olympus or Powerflex. That's the best way to stop cheatgrass and some of these other winter annual grasses in the fall on your farm. I like that you said the word residual and the length of residual. And that's the problem that some farmers have. All right, I've got time to do this. I don't have that big a farm. We've got the acres out this year. Harvest went smooth, whatever. I could do it, but I'm just concerned if I put that product out in the fall that it's going to run out of gas so early in the season. And that's yeah. the problem we're seeing in these Roundup resistant okay. weed fields, that they run out of gas early and then we get a late flush of weeds. Well, coming again, we're crops. talking about two separate things here. So we just talked about how we're going to control those fall weeds. Now let's talk about let's put some herbicide out in the fall. We don't even see any weeds out there, but we want to stop some Roundup resistant weeds before they even really get going early in the spring and before we'd even have a chance to spray in the spring. So let's just do it now. So when you look at products like Valor and Authority, for example, they're very good on a lot of the Roundup resistant weeds, but you have to use the appropriate rate if you want spring residual. So instead of using two ounces of Valor, you're going to need to use three ounces of Valor if you go out in the fall. With authority, same kind of thing. Don't be using some half rate, cut rate thing that you might try in the spring to get a little bit of help. You've got to use the full rate if you're going to go out there in the fall. When you do that also, what we suggest is only spray the fields you know you're going to plant early in the spring. Don't be planting something that you say, well, sometimes this field floods out or sometimes, you know, I don't always plant those soybeans or that corn there till almost the first of June only spray the fields that you're going to be planting real early in the spring. We want to get good crop canopy as early as possible. Then we don't have to worry so much about that residual running out. The other thing is you want to make sure you're very dedicated to this is my crop rotation. I right. will be planting corn in this field next year or I will be planting soybeans because if you put out a strong rate in the fall, let's just say that worst case scenario, you don't get very much moisture at all and you don't get very much heat in the fall. You get it out there and boom, the next day you get a little bit of snow that comes over the top and it stays cold all winter and that little bit of snow never melts till the spring, all of a sudden you've got most of that residual left. And if you do, now all of a sudden if it's a product that doesn't fit for corn or doesn't fit for soybeans, you could be in some trouble. Yes, unless you want to go out with something that can be used on 
either corn or soybeans. So Outlook or Dual, for example, they can be used on corn or soybeans. Valor or Sharpen, they can be used on corn or soybeans. At least, yes, with Valor, you can't use it right in front of corn, but you can certainly use it in the fall and then come back in the spring and plant corn if you had to. Now, we don't want to do that ideally. We want to pick the thing that's the very best for the crop you're going to raise. But if you have some things that are in flux a little bit, then make sure you're using something that could allow you to rotate to either crop. Well, this does really work into the layered pre-emerge program that we've been talking about using three pre's ahead of soybeans, for example, where we like to use a Trefland, Sunlander Prowl, plus a Valor or Authority, plus some Sencor. Now you may say, all right, well, I'm going to put the Valor out in the fall. And then in the spring, I'm going to use some Treflan and Sencor, or some Prowl and Sencor, something like that, where you put some out in the fall, now you've got that first flush out of the way, and then just right before planting, you come in and use the rest of your program. That may be a good way to do it too, and that strengthens your residual program all through the season. Yep, so again, we realize that in your operation, you may not be able to spray this fall because you're too busy. But, like Darren was talking about, if you've got Roundup resistant weeds, or if you have some bad winter annuals or something like that, you may just have to make it a priority on your farm. I know that's something we've done on a few of our acres where we said, look, no matter what, we're getting this sprayed. So before harvest even started, we had the sprayer ready to go and hooked up, and all we needed was a day or two to spray a whole bunch of acres in the fall. We are just obviously trying to hit the right date. The other real quick thing I was gonna mention, because a lot of guys wanna throw Roundup in stuff in the fall, you know, if you have nothing else, no crop growing, Going out there. Remember that Roundup doesn't work very well after your first hard killing frost. So you can certainly throw Roundup out there if you want to, but a lot of times you don't get near the effectiveness late in the fall as compared to early in the fall. Well, fall herbicide application is certainly growing in popularity across the country for a number of different reasons. One of them may be because our weed of the week is a biennial plant. Can you identify this week's weed? Whether you're feeding cattle, milking cows or baling hay, the work on your farm is never done, which is why you need equipment that works as hard as you do. Get the efficiency and versatility you need with Case IH. From farm all compact and utility tractors to balers and mowers, all Case IH equipment is designed with one thing in mind, getting the job done. To learn more, visit caseih.com livestock. Upgrade your trailer to electric with the Rolltech electric system from AgriCover. Strong, flexible pivot arms and motor mount rotate and telescope, allowing the roll tube to rise and flex over heaped loads. The positive automatic lock is impossible to back off to control the flow of grain. This integrated system uses one wireless remote to operate up to 10 tarps and hoppers, keeping your driver out of the dust, rain, and harm's way. See the Rolltech system in action at an AgriCover dealer near you. Capella corn headers are designed for producers who expect more. Expect more grain in your bin. Expect an industry-leading two-year manufacturer's warranty. Expect Capella design chopping and folding options that save you time and money. And whether red, green, or yellow, expect row size options that fit your operation because all producers deserve the best. Expect Capello. It's a head above the rest. Wake up, breakfast is served. Your roots crave pee. Most of your applied pee gets tied up in the soil, a natural phenomenon known as phosphorus fixation. Fix the problem with a Veil Phosphorus Fertilizer Enhancer. A Veil makes more pee available to your roots, here, here, and here. Increasing pee availability can lead to increased pee uptake in the plant. That's more pee, more pee, and more pee. More phosphorus for your crop can be more results in your bin. An average of 9.6 bushels per acre of corn. Breakfast is served. Supercharge your pee with a Veil. For years, FarmLogic has been the easiest and most convenient way to keep up with your farming operations. Well, it just got better. Introducing FarmPad for your phone. You always have your phone with you, so entering records as they happen is as easy as a touch of a button. Chemical database, GPS, service records, and more. When you do it on the farm, save it on your phone and it's backed up forever. Call or visit FarmLogic.com for a free trial and find out why FarmLogic is the best decision tool for the farm. Undoubtedly by now, seed dealers have already been out talking to you about what seed you're going to order next spring, and maybe you've already ordered some seed. Well, we want to talk a little bit today about how you pick the right varieties going into next year. Well, I'll tell you how you pick the wrong varieties. Look at yield trials from this year and just pick the top one. If you do that, 
I can almost guarantee you that's not going to be the best yielder for next year. And the reason why is that variety performed well in that particular ground this year with this year's weather. Next year's weather is almost certain to be completely different than what this year's was. The other thing is, I think about it just like sports. Okay, so for example, we're Minnesota Vikings fans, Ooh, and some of the Vikings oh. players are getting old. So what do the Vikings do? They draft new players who come in, and they outshine the old players. Well, it's the same exact thing with varieties. Why do new varieties of corn and soybeans come out? The reason why is because they're out yielding the old ones. So if you're going to pick last year's winner or the winner from two or three years ago, you're probably not going to win this coming year. So here's what our overall suggestion is. The first thing you've got to look at is, what defensive traits do I need? For example, if you have a Goss's wilt problem typically on your farm, you've got to pick corn varieties that have good tolerance to Goss's wilt. If you have iron Iron deficiency chlorosis issues in your soybeans, well, you've got to pick IDC varieties and so on. So make sure you're focused on the defensive traits that you need first. This is something where having a good seed representative or somebody that actually knows those varieties or even just making very good observations on your own farm can really come into play because you all know the exact pieces of ground that, hey, when the weather turns bad, this is the ground that uh, can go against me. This is where I'm gonna have a tough time raising a good crop. Great, find out which varieties work the best in those types of areas, which ones hold up longer when it gets really hot or really dry or really cold and really wet, whatever the conditions that you normally fight on your farm. Yeah, well, find that's out a great idea. Hold up. That's a great idea 10 years ago, Darren. But the problem is now we're planting nothing on our farm that's older than two years. So well, if we're fine, planting Brian. brand new varieties, have we seen it? Nope. If we're planting year old varieties, we've got tests one time, one year, maybe one or two fields, that's it. The other important thing, because you don't have a lot of experience with each variety you're planting, is plant more varieties on fewer acres. So in other words, we want to make sure we're spreading our risk. I just think that's extremely important in this day and age. Well, there are a lot of things to think about when you're making those seed selections for your farm. It is a very important aspect in your operation. It's not the only thing. You're not totally doomed if you pick a number that's not just perfect, because if you've got the other conditions in your field taken care of, like Brian was talking about with IDC and other certain problems, then that minimizes the importance of seed selection. But it is still a big thing for your farm, so make sure you're working with a good seed rep to get the right varieties for your farm. Well, another big thing on your farm is controlling our Weed of the Week. We'll tell you how to stop this tough weed coming up next. The Weed of the Week is sponsored by the Enlist Weed Control System from Dow AgroSciences, a new herbicide and trait system that will build on glyphosate. Your farm tells a story, one that continues with the decisions you make. Introducing the Enlist Weed Control System, an advanced herbicide and trait system that will build on glyphosate for exceptional control of tough weeds. The next chapter begins. Our Weed of the Week is Western Salsify. We're standing by the edge of a field, and a lot of times that's where we find Western Salsify, on the edges of fields, in ditches, sometimes out in pastures. Kind of looks like a giant overgrown dandelion. Well, it does to some degree, but the leaves are different. When we look at Western Salsify, it has the leaves like a grass plant, but then it has that big head with a great big puffball, kind of like a dandelion. The other thing that's similar to dandelion is if you break a Western Salsify plant, you're going to see that white milky substance inside, just like dandelions and leafy spurge and some of the other weeds. So with Western Salsify, the important thing to remember is it's a biennial weed. So the first year we'll see a rosette type plant growth stage, then we'll see that bolt stage where it puts on the seed head in year too. So fall is a great time. If you see western salsify, get after it in the fall because you can stop it before it goes to seed next spring. In pastures or ditches, you can use 2,4-D. Tordon's also a good product in those non-crop areas. In crop ground, Sharpen is about the best product you can use. It's not fantastic, but if you get a little higher rate, like you could use in corn or wheat, you're going to have fairly decent control. In corn, post-emerge status is real good. Otherwise, in soybeans, you don't have a lot of options. Post-emerge Roundup is the best thing. And post emerge in wheat, I'd probably recommend Husky. Well, our Weed of the Week is one that you've probably seen around the farm but never identified before. It's Western Salsify. Get it under control this fall and you won't have to fight it next year. That's it for our Weed of the Week, but stay tuned. Iron Talk is coming up next. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. What are farmers doing to feed the planet? 
they're using Quadtrek technology, soil management, and planting systems from Case IH to foster a better growing environment that maximizes yield potential. Visit CaseIH.com to be ready. Anhydrous ammonia applications are going down in popularity due to the regulations, the cost for dealers to offer and insure the product, and the safety of use compared to other nitrogen alternatives. However, anhydrous is sometimes a considerably cheaper alternative. While we can't control the politics or costs, we can take steps to increase user safety. That's the topic of today's Iron Talk. The word anhydrous means without water. When it comes into contact with your skin, it can cause rapid dehydration and severe burns. The first thing to think about is personal protection. Wear tight-fitting, chemical-proof goggles or a full face respirator. Rubber gloves that protect against ammonia are also a must. Coveralls or a heavy work shirt are advised as well. Begin by inspecting the equipment before each use. Look for cracks on hoses or signs of wear or slippage around couplers. While most experienced operators aren't scared of a little product in the lines, you are taking risk if you don't purge the lines each time you unhook or inspect them. Check the toolbar quick coupler regularly and replace as recommended or as wear dictates. When switching from tank to tank, always make sure your hoses are the proper length and always use safety chains and hitch pins with safety clips to ensure that hoses aren't stretched and a tank never comes unhooked. When moving to and from fields, never exceed 25 miles per hour. If you follow these recommendations, accidents are unlikely, but if you do have one, Farmers and custom applicators are required to report the incident to regulatory agencies. So be careful and be safe if using anhydrous ammonia this fall. That's all for today's Iron Talk, and now back to the show. For lower cost, higher production, see your Mandaco Agri-Dealer. Ask about the best production-built land roller on the market. Mandaco, simple design for easy transport to easy use. 12 to 85 foot widths, heavy duty 4x8 3 8 inch tube frame, and now available with a steerable wing wheel. Mandaco Land Rollers, improved soil to seed contact, faster, more uniform germination, less moisture loss, eliminate downtime due to rocks. See your Mandaco Agri-Dealer. Visit northcountrymarketing.biz or call. Looking to maximize yield? Quickroots is a microbial seed inoculant that allows the plant root to explore a greater volume of soil, the key to higher yields. Quickroots continues to generate yield response on corn, soybeans, wheat, and more. Quickroots is applied to the seeds so the live microorganisms go right to work, enhancing seedling vigor, increasing the uptake of certain nutrients, including NPK, and expanding root volume. Maximize yield on your farm this season. Call TJ Technologies or your local dealer and get your quick roots today. At Titan Machinery and Case IH, we offer better solutions for all your production needs. It's more than our job, it's who we are. We are parts. We are service. We are training. And most importantly, we are here for you. In any season, for every reason, we've got you covered. Case IH and Titan Machinery, better solutions. Closed captioning for Ag PhD is sponsored by Norwood Sales. The all new S Cube Commercial Tender is the only tender on the market with poly tanks, giving you the capability to haul seed, fertilizer, water, or liquid fertilizer. Each cube can hold 300 units of seed, 2,000 gallons of liquid, or 300 cubic feet of fertilizer. Options include full functioning wireless remote, stainless steel conveyors, and self contained hydraulics. Get yours today at Norwood Sales. That's all the time we have for today's show, but be sure to join us again next time for another Weed of the Week, Iron Talk, Farm Basics, and much more. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD. Only 11.6 cents per dollar spent on food in America goes back to American farmers and agribusinesses. Where does the other 88.4% go? And what really raises food prices? Visit the Responsible Nutrient Management Foundation at rnmf.org to find out.